a medical doctor asked me the other day how often I preach a sermon against worry. And I said, well, about once a year. He said, that is terrible. You ought to preach it every Sunday. Oh, I said, the people would become bored. Well, he said they'd become healthy. And you'd keep them out of my office. Because he said, most of my patients, basically, come to me as a doctor because they're the victims of prolonged and continuous worry. Gilbert Chesterton, the famous British writer and philosopher, once said, if I had the opportunity only once to preach a sermon, it would be against worry. And in order to lend a classical touch to this sermon, I looked up a couple of other quotations. Thomas Carlyle, famous English writer, he said, the first duty of a man or a woman is that of subduing fear. And then good old Teddy Roosevelt, he of the Rough Riders, romantic character, whom you wouldn't think ever had a fear or a worry in his life, said, I have often been afraid or worried, but I decided I wouldn't give in to it. So I made myself as unafraid and unworried, and gradually my fear disappeared. So you don't have to be a worrier. You do not need to be a victim of anxiety, which a famous psychiatrist said is the great modern plea. So the question that you must be asking is, okay, how do I stop worrying? Well, I can tell you for sure, and it's very, very simple, though it isn't all that easy. You'll find the answer in the fourth verse of the 34th psalm where it says i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears not from just the little ones, not from the less difficult ones. Every single solitary one of them, says the 34th Psalm. So that's all there is to it. Seek the Lord in a firm faith and conviction that he'll listen to you 
because he will. And if you ask him, he will deliver you from every worry and every fear. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? But I've read the Bible all my life. So have you. You know the promises it contains. They have never let us down yet, have they? So why won't this promise be kept? Well, I thought about what the doctor said and I looked up my records and I found that I have preached 61 sermons against fear in this church. This is number 62. And they have been really terrific sermons against fear. But you know something? There's still a few people around here who worry. After all these sermons, there's our old enemy, worry, anxiety, and fear that we thought we'd knocked out a long time ago. And here he is. You don't look like you're worried or afraid. And that old enemy is right here. Now how shall we get rid of him for good and all? The answer, as I say, is simple. Worry is a thought. It's the greatest thought in the world, the strongest. Worry and fear, except one. There's another thought which can completely change a human being, and that thought is called faith. So therefore, if instead of nurturing worry thoughts, instead you nurture faith thoughts, you will become blithe and happy and released like you never dreamed of. Just take faith right out of the Bible and cram it into your head. Just saturate your mind with faith. And after a while, as in the case of Teddy Roosevelt, fear will disappear. Now one time, a few years back, I was sitting in my room on the 21st floor of the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Chicago looking out at Lake Michigan when there came a rap at the door and I opened it to find a very attractive young fellow who had a mop, had a, a pail on his arm filled with water and some claws and uh, rubber things that they uh, clean windows with. And he said, I'm awfully sorry to disturb you, my friend, but he said, my job is to wash so many windows in this hotel, and uh, would it be okay if I came in and washed the window? Well, I said, certainly. I'd like to see you do this job. He was very nonchalant and still talking to me. He went over raised the window and put out one leg. I said, hey, wait a minute. It's 21 floors down to the street. He said, so what? And he attached his uh, belt, brought it around him, attached the other side, and stepped out into space while I closed my eyes. <laughs> And he grinned at me through the window. Then he came in, he went out the other window, it was a corner of the room, and did the same. And I said, you know, 
You astonish me. Stepping out in space like that. Doesn't it worry you or fill you with fear? He said, no, why should it? He said, this belt has been tested and it works. And that bolt outside the window to which it's attached is regularly tested and it's built into the brick wall of this building I have faith in it, and I have faith in my belt. But he said, when I step out there, I always say a prayer along with <laughs> You see, daily, you and I have to step out in space, into the unknown, into difficulties, into all kinds of problems. If you've got a tested belt that you know will hold, and if it's got a wall that you know is solid, what are you afraid of? The anchor Holes is the name of an old song. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fear. Of course, this won't get you anywhere if you don't believe. Down there about six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They used to sit a couple years ago. And this man had a nervous breakdown because of his worry and his fear. It just goes to show that preaching is valuable because I said, on that Sunday a long time ago exactly what I'm saying now this man was a Christian believer in superficiality but suddenly that Sunday he grabbed this thought of faith and putting himself in God's hand he told me afterwards that from that minute he never was again afraid he never again worried he became of rugged health lived up into his 90s so you see when truth is being uttered from the holy pulpit out of the holy bible and you're in the Holy Church, and you listen to it, if you grab it, everything will be different. Then you'll live on the principle that you just do the best you can about everything, and leave the rest to God, who will take care of it. And that'll free you from worry. I was reading one of my old books, which shows how far I'm reduced in the reading field. But it, it was published in England recently, and uh, they sent me six copies, paperback, of a book which I wrote a long while ago called You Can If You Think You Can. And I was reading the book to see how good a job they did. They, they changed certain things into English uh, language as they have it over there. And I came across this story about a visit I had on one occasion with the late President Harry Truman. 
in his office in the White House. I met him on several occasions. I always liked him because he was a real guy. He was a human being and he was very honest and you never could figure what he was going to say next. And he did a good job. So that day there with him, I said, uh, Mr. President, I'm preaching a sermon next Sunday on worry. And uh, I'd like to quote you. Do you ever worry? He says, no, sir. Not on your life. I got over it a long while ago. Well, I said, look at all the stuff that comes at you every day. I listened to President Reagan the other night on a, in a news uh, uh, thing and questions that they asked the man, how much he has to know or act like he knows. <laughs> I would think it would drive you to distraction. So I said, uh, Mr. Truman, how, don't you ever worry? And he said, no, he never did. I said, how, how do you do that? Well, he said, I am president of the United States. But don't let that all you. He said, I'm just Harry Truman from Missouri. And he said, I just have to get elected. I am no epical figure of history. I'm just a simple, plain man. And you know, all I can do is just do my best. So he said, I do my best all day long. Then when I get into bed at night, I just turn it all over to the Lord. And I leave it with him. Of course, he said, if I make mistakes, the voters don't blame the Lord, they blame me. <laughs> and he said, I tell you, I've read the Bible all my life. And I got rid of worry by reading Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, which says, Having done all, stand. Uh, I told him the psychiatrist had said that was the most therapeutic line in the Bible. Having done all that you can do when you can't do anything more about it at all. Just stand. Better still, sit. <laughs> Don't fret about it. You've done it. I'd forgotten all about that visit till I read this book the other day. But it's so sound, so sensible. Now, where did Truman learn that? In a Baptist church back in Missouri, where he was taught to read the Bible. Do everything you could do about a thing. And then, sing. <laughs> well, that's one thing. A second thing is not only to fill your mind full of faith, but full, fill your mind full of God. Think about God. Talk to God. Walk with God. It'll give you a great high. So high that it'll lift you up above every worry and anxiety. 
I've walked nearly a mile down Fifth Avenue this morning thinking about God. Testing this out on myself. Every step I went, I felt better because I was taking God in. I probably have used this before, but I don't hesitate to use it again because it was the greatest lesson I ever learned about worry. And I've had my bouts with it too. It's a long custom in this church to have the minister's portrait painted and it hangs in his house until he dies and then they hang it in a back room back here for posterity. And the picture or portrait is not painted until in the godly, if not artistic judgment of the elders and deacons, the minister is at the height of his good looks. Mine was painted about 25 years ago. <laughs> Brother Caliandro hasn't had his painted yet. But he's on his way to the point. Well, my picture was painted by an artist named Howard Chandler Christian. He was one of the great painters of that day. He was a robust fellow with a great big laugh. He didn't look like an artist. He looked like a prize fighter. But he had skill in those fingers. And one day I was going to preach a sermon the next Sunday on worry. So I said, Howard, do you ever worry? And like Truman, he said, ha ha, worry not on your life. I said, didn't you ever worry? Well, he said, one time, some years ago, I saw that everybody was worrying, and uh, I thought I was missing something, so I decided... I decided to try it, and I consulted all the expert worriers, and he said, I set up a worry day that I was going to worry. And, and I got up in the morning, and I had a big breakfast because you shouldn't try to worry on an empty stomach. And he said, about noontime, I gave it up as a bad job, and I haven't worried ever since. Oh, I said, come on now. That sounds interesting, but it doesn't sound practical. Why, well, he said, it's the most practical thing in the world. Instead of worrying, he said, the first thing in the morning, I spend 15 minutes filling my mind full of God. to overflowing. I just fill my mind so full of the Heavenly Father that there's no room for anything else to get in there. He was one of the geniuses of art in his day. He was a highly intellectual man. But he had the skill to be simple. So he just filled his mind full of God. And I remember him as a joyous, happy, childlike, lovable, unforgettable character. He sought the Lord and the Lord heard him. He delivered it from all his fears, and he will for you too, that's for sure. Our Heavenly Father, we've been talking about a disease that afflicts mankind. Worry, anxiety, and fear. And in our poor stumbling way, we've applied the remedy which is 
faith in God and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Oh,